So when I first moved up here, I was all alone and I needed some companionship. So I got these guys, goats. Goats make an amazing pet. They're low maintenance, they're friendly. That's Elon, hello. That's Tofu, the star of the show down there. That's Beretta there, Beretta. Now, I think it's time to expand the family. What do you guys think? You ready for some new roommates? Huh? Oh, you're interested, huh? We're gonna have to expand this pen because tomorrow, there is some new animals coming to town. What do you think, Tofu? So when I moved up to Cerro Gordo just over 13 months ago, it was just me. No other living souls in this whole place. Well, save some ghosts depending on who you ask. And I loved it. That was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for that peace, that solitude, that time to self-reflect. But after a couple of months, I was like, you know what? It needs a little bit of life up here. And so when I was thinking about that, the first thing that came to my mind was goats. I've had goats in the past, and I know two things. Number one, they're very easy to take care of. If they have hay and water, they're pretty much good. Hey, Tofu, you wanna come up? And <laughs> number two, they're generally happy to see you. Don't you think so, Tofu? <laughs> oh, you have such bad breath. <laughs> and number two, if you put a goat in a pen with any type of plants, they're gonna take care of all of those plants. They're basically like living lawnmowers. <laughs> Isn't that right, Tofu? <laughs> so, a few days later, I had goats up here and it was amazing. And they're still amazing. There's just something calming about having pets, taking care of another life form. You know, it provides some type of structure and responsibility and just companionship. You know, no matter what, come out here, Tofu will always try to eat my jacket or generally <laughs> have something to say. And I love that. You know, and after a couple of months of having the goats, I was like, you know what? Maybe some more animals. And that first came from utility. There was one too many mice up here at Cerro Gordo. And so a rancher called me one day and he said, Brett, I heard you have a mice problem. I got the solution for you. If you can come today, I have a number of kittens whose mother died. And at first I was like, eh, I don't know if I want kittens growing up. I was always a dog person. So I seemed like I wanted that. But then he said, you know, they're basically gonna die if you don't. So I was like, geez, you know, pull on the heartstrings a little bit more. So a few hours later, I was back here to Cerro Gordo with the intention of having these mice hunting machines that would eradicate all the mice from all the Cerro Gordo buildings. Unfortunately, I adopted them. Are you eating my, hey, hey, no. I, unfortunately, I adopted them. Hey, I adopted them, <laughs> nursed them back to health, fell in love with them and pampered them to the point where I can never see the cats going outside these days. You know, Gordo is far too handsome to be out there in the wilderness. And after that, it was winter time. So I thought, you know what, let's pump the brakes a little bit on this pet expedition at Cerro Gordo. Stop eating my sweatshirt. But during that time, I started researching and I found alpacas. And alpacas, one, generally look hilarious. Two, once per year, you shear alpacas. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna have alpacas up here. They're gonna look great. They're low maintenance. They don't make much noise. And once a year, I can make custom Cerro Gordo beanies out of our own alpaca fur. Sign me up. So I started looking for different places to get alpacas. And I found this sanctuary just outside of LA. And what they do is they take in alpacas from people that couldn't take care of them. You know, whether the person had too small a space or just not enough time on their hands, that's what they do. And after a bunch of conversations with the owner, I decided alpacas were me. And she's like, I'll let you know when I got a few. And just over a week ago, I got that magical email. And she says, Brent, I think I got the alpacas for you. There are three adolescent males that all know each other that need a home. And I said, sign me up. Final day without roommates. Final day, just alone in here. You ready for some new a company? Yeah? What do you think, Tofu? There are new animals coming later. You're gonna have to get along, Elon. So what I'm gonna do today is take this down to Keeler, in Keeler, transfer into my two-wheel drive truck, but that's not even gonna be big enough for the alpacas. So I was told I need to get a minivan. Apparently they fold up or something and go in the trunk. And so what I did is I researched the closest rental company and the closest rental company to Cerro Gordo is in Ridgecrest, just about two hours away. So I called 
Made a reservation for a minivan, got my confirmation email, and the day of adoption, I was stoked, you know? Today was the day, I woke up at 7 a.m., gung-ho to get there to be the first in line at Enterprise to make sure there was no delays in me getting these alpacas back to Cerro Gordo. All right, first transfer is complete. Back into the two-wheel drive truck. Just going by Cerro Gordo Road. Next stop, Ridgecrest to pick up a minivan. Getting alpacas is something I've been thinking about for at least six months. You know, animals have been a part of Cerro Gordo's history since it's been a mining town. You know, all of the original supplies used to be brought up by 20 mule teams and horses were commonplace for people to get around. And there's even a history of a lot of the different Cerro Gordo owners owning cats up at the property. I think both for companionship and uh, rodent reduction. So to me, it only seemed right to get animals back to Cerro Gordo. And I think caring for the goats and the cats has given me some structure to my days. I know that each morning I wake up and I need to take a trip to feed the goats and then a trip to feed the cats. And that structure is something that I need up here. You know, the days can be pretty fluid, but knowing at least that's how I'm gonna start my day gives me a little bit of order that I need. That sign says Ridgecrest has what you need. Ridgecrest does in fact have what I need, which is a minivan so I can get some alpacas, which I really need. Almost Ridgecrest now. I'm gonna pick up this car, hopefully, and continue on my way to get some new animals. It's gonna be a good day. Unfortunately, when the shop opened at 9 a.m., they informed me that although I had a reservation, they could not and would not honor it because there was no cars to rent. A bit of frustration happened and they said, you know what, here's three other places in town, go check those out. Worst case scenario, we will make you a reservation in Lancaster, which is about an hour more towards LA for me. But in my giddy excitement about getting alpacas, I didn't worry about that too much. I was like, sure, whatever. So I went to these three said rental places in Ridgecrest and struck out three strikes and I was out of there. This may come as a surprise to you, but uh, the place that sells insurance, realty, used cars, and U-Hauls uh, has nothing, is not in fact open. So I am continuing on, headed towards Lancaster. A bit annoyed, but at the same time, still excited about figuring out a way to get these alpacas back up here. Arrived in Lancaster, and for the second time <laughs> in about as many hours, I was told by Enterprise that although I had a reservation, they would not honor it. This time, frustration level grew just slightly. All right, let's try my sixth rental car place of the day. Just exactly how I wanted to spend my day, you know, running around like a crazy person. After going to about eight uh, different car rental places in the same day, there was a car rental place just before I was gonna get there. I was like, you know what? Why not, let's try it. So I go in and I think someone wanted me to have alpacas that day because not only did they have a minivan, I got in and rented this thing within 10 minutes. I was back on the road in a minivan that had been eluding me the entire day prior. I gotta say, brand new cars sure are nice. I mean, look how clean this windshield is. Not all those bugs. It's quiet in here. 30 minutes out from alpaca time. Seems like this might come together today. I was almost certain that it wasn't going to but now things are looking better. It's beautiful out here. And uh, yeah, hopefully in just a little bit, I'll be headed the other way. But uh, three little friends in the back of this car. I pull up to this sanctuary in a minivan right when a school was there getting a tour and learning about alpaca feeding or something. And so they're like, oh, you're Brent with a minivan for the alpacas? I'm like, sure, you know, so you back up the minivan right to the fence raise it up, put down the back seats, throw a bale of hay in there, and I went to meet my three new friends. And I remember as soon as I saw them, it was love at first sight. You know, alpacas are some of the most interesting looking animals you'll ever see. You know, they have this funny little haircut at the top and they've just been sheared, so they're looking pretty thin otherwise. And immediately one of them just turned to me and smiled. 
uh, these goofy teeth that they seem to have. And that was it. You know, I was in it at that point. Uh, I led them out with a leash. And you know what? She was right. They just folded right up in the back seat and just sat there pretty much the three hour ride back. All right, so it worked out. Got the friends in the back. What's up, guys? And we are on a route back to Cerro Gordo. I love it. Back at Cerro Gordo Street in Mojave. And I'll tell you what, I put on some Jimmy Buffett. These guys back here immediately just laid down, been perfectly quiet for the last hour or so. I think me and these guys are gonna get along just fine. How you doing? You like this music? Well, good, because I like this music too. The rental process has taken so long that I knew I was up against the sunset to get back to your Cerro Gordo. The last thing in the world that I wanted to do was take a two-wheel drive minivan with three alpacas up an eight mile dirt road after dark. So I was pushing it getting back. I was humming, coming. I even probably should have stopped to fill up, but I was like, you know what? No, I need to get there before the sun fully sets. And off to Cerro Gordo Road we go. Now I gotta be careful because I don't think this van is four wheel drive. It definitely has a, doesn't have the tires I need. So usually, I mean, if I'm on a dirt bike, I'm riding up this, you know, 40 miles an hour. But today I'll probably keep it to 10 or 15. And that's the suggestion to anybody that wants to come visit. Keep it around 15, you know, the faster you go, the more likely you are your tires will pop or your car will overheat. And those are the two main things that happen here is either people's tires pop or their car overheats. And it's not infrequent, you know, it's probably one in 10 cars that happens to. So uh, be advised if you're gonna head this way of that. And let's try to get up there by the time the sun sets. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Just over halfway and it is just keeping behind those mountains over there. So let us see. It'll be close. Coming up on the final turn and the light just seems to barely be holding out for us. We'll definitely at least have the afterglow by the time we get up to town, but right now, would you look at that? With a little bit of sunlight left, Welcome back to Cerro Gordo. And so we got there just as the sun had set. And then it seemed the alpacas had gotten really comfortable in the van. Because <laughs> getting these alpacas out of the van became a whole process. All right, it looks beautiful. You guys ready? It's almost the moment of truth. Hope you're ready. Oh, hello there. Come with me, please. Go, please, please come, sir. Please come. Come on. Come on, go. You're free. Welcome to your home. Yay! 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 Look at this, the initial interaction. What do you guys think of each other? Oh, Chachi's meeting Tofu. Oh, come on guys, you're home. The car's at your home, please. Food, does food convince you? Food? Come on. Come 
Come on. <laughs> now I can't get him out of my car. The moment I had been waiting for was the big standoff. You know, when these alpacas are going to meet the goats. So here we have it. The first meeting. Look at them. Goats and alpacas are meeting. I haven't separated her for right now just because I don't know how they go along. What do you guys think? Do I go in there? The time has come for these two groups to merge. Friends? You scared? Are you scared? Oh. Each side is scared of each other. Go in, guys. Go ahead. Everybody in. Come on. Look, look at Tofu back there. Just straight. Come on, guys. Okay. You're in. You're home. Be free. You're home. Yeah. Success. It was a long day, but I mean, look at those. Llamas with that sunset background. It's about as good as it gets. Welcome to your home, guys. You have all this acreage. I will be expanding your guys' domain tomorrow. But for tonight, hope you guys have a nice night. I'm going to get this, this thing off of you guys. I hope you guys make friends with the goats. They're going to be your friends, I promise you. You're going to be all right. Trooper. Chachki. Oh, look at they follow me. They follow me everywhere. You guys do how to do a better job of being friendly. You hear me, Tofu? All you guys. More friendly to these guys. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tofu, they tried. Now it's your time to try. Go try. <laughs> no. Finally, Tofu, being the star she is, went over and seemed to make peace with them, and they settled into their first night here. Chachki, it's time for me to show you the town. You ready to meet Cerro Gordo? Come along. Lead the way if you know where you're going. You're going this way though. Other way. Come on. Chachi, come on. This way. We're gonna go see Lola's. This is one of the original brothels here in town. Just got rebuilt. Not saying that got rebuilt for you, but it's rebuilt. Hope you like it. This way. Look at Lola's. Roof on and everything. Here, you lead the way. Show me how it's done. All right, come on. Let's go in the assay office. This is where they used to test the quality of the silver. Got you this way. Come on. Come on. Welcome to the assay office. So this is where they tested the quality of the mineral at Cerro Gordo. So look, back here, let me show you. These are original silver bars from the town that you're now staying in. That's called the Widowmaker. They use that to blast the dynamite here at Cerro Gordo. Let's leave. Let's go this way. Chachki and I beelined it back to the pen. You know, he had just absorbed too much history for one day. I get it, it's an overwhelming place. We're gonna continue the tour tomorrow. I'll show you all, then you can tell Trooper, and Trooper, you can tell Stony. And after that, I read that you should not, in fact, have goats and alpacas together because male goats, 
Elon specifically, who's back there eating, can be very aggressive and alpacas have limited defenses. So I decided to construct a fence, construct a defense right down the middle of this pen. And then that night it snowed, even though it's the last week of April, we had a freak snow and alpacas are fine in snow. You know, they can handle down to 15 below Fahrenheit. But the next day I decided I needed to build them a pen. So we had a volunteer up here and over the course of a day, uh, constructed them what I believe is a very nice little pen. It's all done. I built this whole home for you guys. Do you guys like it? Huh? I think it looks amazing. Guys, come in here. Come on, come on, come join me. Live a little bit, you know? You got this beautiful manger of sorts. Fresh hay, fresh roof. View, you'd be safe from the elements. So these days, these guys are set up. They got a pen, they got a fence, they got more land than they did before. And I am just so excited to think over the coming years, all of the kids, they're gonna be able to come up here and enjoy seeing these alpacas. Cause I remember that when I was a kid, I loved animals. You know, I would go to these petting zoos and I would go to regular zoos and farms and ranches and everything in between. I can very distinctly remember riding ponies when I was, you know, three feet tall. It was like a very fond memory for me. And had I seen alpacas when I was three feet tall, I don't know what I would have done. I would have just giggled probably and thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I hope that in the future, uh, many people can come, not just learn about Cerro Gordo and enjoy this beautiful scenery, but also check out alpacas. And maybe that'll lead them to one day be sitting here on a bucket behind some goats next to some alpacas talking about the next generation should learn about alpacas. So that's it. These guys are the most recent addition here at Cerro Gordo and I am super excited about it. Already they bring that kind of calming energy you know the goats can get really riled up these guys always seem pretty chill kind of like me so i hope that continues this week i hope you guys are chill i hope a lot of you guys get to make your way up here and meet these guys in person because let me tell you they might look fun and interesting on camera but they're a lot more fun and interesting in person so till next time i am signing out here from cerro gordo which now has an official alpaca population of three and to my knowledge the only mining town with alpacas. I'm just gonna throw that in there. I hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you next time.